Welcome, friends, to another episode of Dan Tremblay Music. It would be nice to have a selection of any sample library that you could possibly think of, but maybe you could only afford to have just one. Now, what would be that one library? I might say Spitfire Audio Albion 1 would be a great place to start. If you're a piano player, I would probably say Native Instruments Noir Piano. We're going to dig in today. Uh, I'm pretty obsessed with this library. We are only using just this one sample library for this project today, and we pushed it pretty far. Let's get to it. <laughs> walk through here it is so we have eight instances of native instruments noir which seems excessive i know but i was trying to see what else we could do it how far could we push one library one sample library and create a composition with one piano library and i think we pushed it pretty far so we start with the particles uh, engine which i've talked about in past videos so and to enable the particles engine you click on it over here and you get this rhythmic kind of texture so let me start with this i automated this in so you'll hear it kind of sneak in a little bit all right so just just get a little bit of texture underneath um heavy felt i'll come back to that this was something different than I didn't try before. So it's like a a really low subby kind of a sound. So I literally just went into all these different kind of things, different parameters, and I just clicked and messed around with it. That's all I did. Um, so this particular one, where did I get that? Let's go into effects. See, I don't even remember what I did because I was just clicking all over the place. There we go. I messed around with the... Uh, the tonal depth and then there's a little sub right there so there you go activates the sub microphone samples recorded with the reverse wired ns10 speaker under low keys of the grand piano sounds very complicated but you get this really cool sound so let's check this out almost doesn't even resemble a piano. Very cool sound. Then we uh, have the next one is, uh, I clicked on the transient. Okay, and I fooled around to sustain an attack. And I came up with this. So now, now we're getting like a synthy kind of a sound. It just goes to show you how what range this library has. It's pretty incredible. And uh, next, I went again back to the particles engine. This time, I went with a brush. So you can change all these. I mean, it's just endless what you can do with this library. If you're looking for, I don't do a ton with sound design, but when I get these libraries, it's so easy to do it with these libraries. So anyway, this is what I got with this one. You know, as you get that stereo sound just swirling around and it's a high part, which contrasts ni nicely with these other kind of low subby sounds that we have. Uh, then I went in with this one. What do we do with this one? Uh, again, messed around with the transient sustain. What else did I do? I think maybe that was it. Ton of reverb, you know, always messing around with the reverb and the delays. I think maybe I might've messed around with the overtones. Um, oh, and again, tonal depth, depth and sub, and uh, this is almost like a pad sound. I 
I mean, you know, you can hear it. there's a piano in there somewhere, but really, really processed. Uh, again, we think we did something similar in here. Uh, again, with the transient and sustain. So try to create some kind of pad-like sound. So let's listen to this. Just, just very, very background, just to kind of, you know, I talk about ear candy. Well, that's kind of ear candy. And then we have more of a, I guess this is probably the most traditional piano sound of the whole thing, but hev heavy, heavy, heavy on the delay. So let's listen to that. pops and clicks that's just my system with the screen capture and everything and nothing to do with the library I did um, quantize these piano parts because they're all rhythmic parts and because the delay is synced uh, it's tempo synced if you don't play it you know really really accurately the uh, the repeating pattern delays is not going to sync properly so these parts are quantized because they're rhythmic parts and then I went in and I found this really cool one uh, right at the end. Okay, so these are a set of a bunch of presets in there. And I clicked on heavy felt. And this is uh, the part at the end, what I have. You know, I mean, not, not resembling a piano, but what a cool sound it is. And you notice that it's actually marked as toy speakers. That's another preset that I was messing around with, but I actually recorded that. I was kind of, eh, the great thing about MIDI, right, is you record part, then boom, swap it out, replace it with another sound, and you're good to go. So that is it, eight instances of Noir. I think it's it turned out pretty good. There is no additional processing. In fact, I'll, t I'll take the uh, my... Ozotope, uh, I always say Ozotope. I'll take my Ozone off the master bus so you can just listen to it straight up. Um, there's automation just in a couple of tracks just to fade in and fade out. No external delays, EQs, nothing. Uh, just eight separate noir parts and I think it'd be pretty impressive what you can do. Let's listen to the track and we'll have some final thoughts.
Final thoughts. I think it's pretty impressive and amazing of how much you can do with this one piano library. Just on its own, it can be just a beautiful, soft felt piano library, but in terms of sound design, what you can do with it with a particle engine and all of the effects, the delay and the reverb, and I mean, I just barely scratched the surface of what this library is capable of. It's pretty amazing. And again, this is where Native Instruments really shines. Um, you know, I think it's one of the most versatile libraries I've come across in a long time and probably why it is so popular. If you can get your hands on it, you know, get it when it's part of one of uh, Native Instruments kind of discounted specials. Um, I got mine when it was part of a package where I could upgrade my complete and get included with uh, guitar rig and a couple of other things. I would probably stay away from, you know, the big daddies like the ultimate and the crazy ultimate and the get everything. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff in there which you are probably not going to use. And Native Instruments does a lot of things really well, but if you're looking for strings and that sort of thing, I would still really stick with Spitfire Audio for strings. But for all this other stuff, like their guitar rigs, um, for their piano libraries, and, you know, battery, again, it's just a fantastic library, that's really where they shine. And a lot of other little nuts and bolts in there as well. I've gotten a lot of use out of uh, Session Horns Pro for the project that I was I've been working on with Christopher Norton. Um, so you can, there's a lot of little hidden gems in there that you can really push and make shine. So Native Instruments still just making incredible products and Noir. I just can't say enough about it. If you like getting in there and fooling with sounds and experimenting a little bit with sound design all within the library itself. Um, check it out. It is so easy to do and the results you can obtain very, very quickly. Get composing, my friends. Stay safe. I'll catch you in the next one.